All right, who wants to take this one? I can take this one. Okay. We can see a papule here with some pretty dense uh, dermal collagen, but also acral surface with thick strong and corneum. And we can even see from this power kind of some vertically oriented, yeah, the vertically oriented collagen, some vascular hepatic vessels. It reminds me of an angiofibroma, but with that acral surface, makes it a acquired digital fibrokeratoma. Yeah, very good. This is an acquired digital fibrokeratoma, and and you described it very nicely that it, it's a polypoid lesion, kind of the shape of a skin tag, um, acrocordon, but it's lined by, not by the regular thin skin of the, the trunk, like where you'd get acrocordons, but instead by thick acral uh, type skin, so thick um, uh, acanthotic epidermis and thick orthokeratin. And then the dermis is a lot more fibrotic than normal, and it tends to have these kind of vertical bundles of collagen and bland fibroblasts or myofibroblasts with a variable amount of dilated vessels in there. And I like that you pointed out that this looks kind of like a um, angiofibroma or what we call a fibrous papule when we see them, you know, on the face. And indeed, the, um, there is a lot of overlap, I think. And, and actually, there is a form of angiofibroma that occurs on acral skin. And um, that it, it's, it's not called by the name angiofibroma, but to me, it basically is in that spectrum. And that, that's called a, a periungual fibroma or a conin tumor, which occurs in the setting of tuberous sclerosis. And to me, looks very, very similar to acquired digital fiber keratoma. So if a patient has multiple little papules around the periphery of the nail, like on the nail folds, and it looks like this microscopically, then that would be a, a coenin tumor, periungual fibroma, which again, in my opinion, is really on the spectrum more of an angiofibroma, even though it's called fibroma. Um, it has vessels. And uh, just like, you know, patients with tuberous sclerosis get multiple angiofibromas of the face, which are known by the misnomer of adenoma sebaceum, they also get angiofibroma like lesions around the nails. The, I always worried uh, when I was a fellow about, well, what am, am I going to miss a Cohen tumor one day and miss, miss someone getting diagnosed with, with uh, tuberous sclerosis? And what I uh, what I read, at least, and I've not seen many of them, but uh, but what I've read is that uh, when when they're one of the last of the signs, the cutaneous signs to develop in tuberous sclerosis patients. So usually patients that start developing those already have a known diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis because they developed the other lesions um, and, and the neurological problems. Uh, previously. Here's a, a different angle here, but, but anyway, sorry, that was a, a total side uh, step to talk about tuberous sclerosis. This lesion, acquired digital fiber keratoma, is not associated with tuberous sclerosis. It just looks like that lesion, so I just wanted to bring that up. Sorry for any confusion I've caused. So this acquired digital fiber keratoma, they're benign. They often occur on the digits, um, but they can, I've seen them sometimes on like the palm or the sole, um, so not always digital. So in those cases, I'll call them like a uh, acral fibrokeratoma. I, I don't know if that's a, actually a, a, a true known name, but I, it's just the name I made up that seems to work. So uh, in here, look at the nice vertical kind of dense, kind of scar-like almost uh, collagen bundles there and a bland uh, fibroblast in the middle. But yes, yeah, so that's acquired digital fibrokeratoma. And the main differential that you could think of would be a, a, a periungual fibroma. Or the other thing is if you saw something like this with some kind of mixoid change to it, and a bit more cellularity, and it was on the digit or the acral surface. You could also think of this other uh, kind of uh, more esoteric soft tissue tumor called um, superficial acral fibromyxoma or digital fibromyxoma. They can sometimes have a little bit of overlap with this. They're also benign, so so don't get too worried. And they're kind of in the probably related to spindle cell lipomas, actually. Um, but anyway, I've got I've got some videos about that. If if you uh, uh, want, you can I'll put a link down below if you're watching this online. Okay, any questions? All right.